Well, we're less than a week away from Election Day in Virginia, and President Biden is giving a major boost to Democratic nominee Terry McAuliffe. The president campaigned for him yesterday in a last-ditch effort to energize Democratic voters. The White House and other top Democrats are trying to keep a firm grip on the crucial battleground state amid growing Republican opposition. The race between McAuliffe and Republican businessman Glenn Youngkin remains razor thin. The director of elections and surveys at CBS News, Anthony Salvanto, is here now to break the race down in terms of numbers. Anthony, really good to see you um, this morning. We know uh, there's been quite a lot of early voting already. I think it's like uh, over 725,000 votes have already been cast. Um, what is early voting turnout looking like so far and how does it compare to last year's presidential election? Good morning, Emory. Yeah, as everybody, the political eyes of the nation turn to Virginia, this weekend you're going to see a lot of attention on the early vote. You mentioned Democrats trying to drive up turnout, get people to the polls in advance of Tuesday. And one of the reasons that's so important is that Democrats have increasingly relied on that early vote to bolster their fortunes statewide, not just in Virginia, but in a lot of places. And we should remind folks for background, it used to be that both parties really tried to get people to the polls early, but Democrats have increasingly been using it, Republicans less so after 2020, when, remember, uh, former President Trump was railing against early voting in a lot of mail. So that's a little bit of context. And now let me show you the way things look. This bottom line here is where we've been charting those numbers you mentioned at the top, where just over 700,000 Virginians have already voted. And this line here above it, this is the 2020 line up here. And what you can see is that 2021 is not going up as fast as 2020 did. Now, there could be a couple of reasons for that. One is people in polls tell us, well, the pandemic isn't as much of a concern, still a concern, but not as much to get them to vote early or by mail. So more of them are going to switch back and vote in person on Election Day. But the other thing that maybe some Democrats worry about is, does this portend a lower turnout? Does this number here where we think it's about a quarter right now of all the votes that are going to be cast, does that mean Democrats still have more work to do to kind of drive up enthusiasm? Mm. And that's why you see that comparison between the two, 2020 and 21, getting so much attention, Emory. Yeah, I know that, you know, sometimes there's all the speculation that, um, you know, Democrats tend to vote early or not. It, you know, the past couple of years have been so kind of out of the norm. What can early voting tell us about where the race is? So what you do is you look at the type of folks who, when you look at the voter files, the public voter files, and where those votes, those voters have come from, which precincts, which counties, you can make some estimates mm. about how each party is doing in the early voting. And what we estimate here at CBS is that in those 700,000 votes that have been cast, it's about a 20 points, a little better than a 20 point lead for Democrats or about 200,000 votes. Again, that's an estimate based on the typology of the voters who've cast them. Now, that may or may not be enough because what happens then on election day, we know from the polling, is that Republicans tell us that that's when they are going to turn out. So when folks tune in and watch us on Tuesday as we break all this down, when the votes come in, what you may see is the question, can Republicans make up the gap? Can, the, can Republicans go catch up and then surpass what Democrats have done on the early vote, Amber? And what are some of the key places to watch in Virginia? Yeah, so let's break down the map a little bit. And what I want to show you is, first of all, this is the map that we'll fill in on Tuesday. But First, let me show you what happened in 2020, because that points to your question. You're going to see up here, these are, this is northern Virginia. These are the suburbs of Washington, D.C., up here. And it's deep blue, as opposed to a lot of the western part of the state where it's red, where President Trump won. Now, the, there's a huge amount of votes up there for Democrats. And if I take this map, I'm going to turn it on its side and show you the relative amount of votes that are there. 
And what you see mm. is this big blue bar showing the dominance or the really extra weight that that area really provides for a Democratic candidate. So it's about a third of the votes cast in the whole state coming from Northern Virginia. And there's a story in there, Anne-Marie, that will watch unfold, and that is Democrats have really you know, done so well in Virginia over recent years and recent cycles, in part because as college graduates, um, as more affluent voters have come into those northern suburbs, they voted Democratic. And that's one of the things we're going to be watching as this thing unfolds on election night. Should be very interesting, Anthony. Thank you very much. Thank you. So a quick programming note, and of course, Anthony just mentioned it. Uh, be sure to join us Tuesday for a full night of election coverage. Anthony will be there along with Ed O'Keefe, Elaine Keanu, Major Garrett, and they'll uh, have results and analysis from key races in New Jersey and in Virginia. It all starts Tuesday, November 2nd at 5 p.m. right here on CBSN.